Hello everyone. My name is Strange, and I believe that people should know the truth. Today, I will tell you a story that our subscribers sent us. Good night, fellow subscribers of the Strange UFO channel. I decided to tell my story of meeting, as it seems to me, with something alien. I was about 12 years old at the time, give or take a year. So many details have been erased from my memory, but the overall picture has remained unchanged. I was already quite independent, so I went to various clubs and sections where hyperactive parents signed me up. That's when, returning home from the football section, I decided to cut through the park. By the way, that park was not abandoned, but it was approaching this state. Not the largest, with a couple of permanent attractions, a man-made pond, stalls, and benches. Some of the tiled paths were spoiled somewhere by nature, and somewhere by people. The roots of nearby trees lifted some of the tiles, skewing or completely splitting them. Strange personalities also stole several tiles. The trees, incredibly tall for such an area, in fact, were almost not cared for, occasionally pruning branches that were too long. I think you, comrades Inona, have already imagined this picture. My path ran along the shore of that very man, made reservoir, a small lake whose shores are overgrown. That's where I saw it. The water in the center of the lake was slightly glowing. This light, I cannot describe it, comrades Anans, he's not from here. I haven't seen anything like it before or since. It's like a mixture of all colors, at the same time the absence of every single one of them. Something that could not exist on our planet. And the glow was gaining strength. Now only a small spot in its center glows. Now it begins to expand, and now the whole lake is shining with this color. A painful, unearthly, frightening color. I tried to run, but I stumbled and fell shamefully on my ass. The glow was gaining strength and steam began to rise from the surface of the water. It was getting thicker and rising higher, as if forming something like a tornado, but without wind. In the seconds it took me to crawl away and rest against a tree, this thing became almost twice as thick and tall. And so, when the concentration reached the limit, the smoke, steam, gas, in short, this thing began to rotate, twisting as if around its axis. She spun faster and faster, and now, with a pillar of the same light pierced the heavens, finally going outside. God only knows how I stayed dry at that moment. But the worst part was something else. As I was leaving, I suddenly felt eyes on me. A strange, cold, studying look. There would be no running without any looking back. I turned around. I turned around and saw the remains of this creature. Yes, now I'm sure it's a creature, and worse, it's intelligent. The swirls of that strange gas still hung in the air, continuing to rotate around its axis. But this axis was directed at me. It was as if a grotesque eye hung over the pond and fixed its heavy gaze on me. But the swirls finally blinked and pulled into the water. How I ran that evening. I've never run like this before. I ran through this thrice-cursed park, jumping over roots, running around low branches, and finally got to a stop. In general, for about a month I didn't think about that damn park and this thing. Whatever it is, I just stopped taking a shortcut along the way to the bus stop and began to go around longer, but I had no desire to return to that lake. It was only a month later that I got sick. According to the symptoms, the flu. It was already autumn, so I wasn't particularly surprised by this. I felt, by the way, just disgusting. Much worse than with the usual flu, which I already had. This went on for three days, and then the dreams came. Although now I'm not sure if they were dreams. A completely white room, a quiet hum coming from the walls, and again these creatures, as if woven from fog. And the light. This abnormal light of an incomprehensible shade was also here. I don't really know, or rather, don't remember what happened to me. The eyes seemed to be filled with water, or something similar. This thing did not interfere with seeing in any way, but an unpleasant feeling remained. The creatures talked to me about something, and I even answered them something. Not of his own volition, as if he was in a dream. Such a disgusting feeling when you are not able to control your body and everything happens as if on automatic. And it was also cold there, like an autumn evening. Not a fierce frost, but a chill that penetrates to the very depths, from which the hair stands on end all over the body. Something was definitely happening to me there, something was being done to me. Sometimes after waking up, I found healing scars or bruises on my body. On the stomach, on both arms, above the elbows, and on the palms, on the temples, on the neck, on the calves of the legs. These marks looked as if they had been inflicted on me for a very long time and rarely lingered beyond one day. What is even more strange, there was always something wrong in the room, as in the evening. An open window, books piled on the floor or clothes lying out of place. It was freaking scary and stressful. Yes, by the way, I was ill for about a week, 
after which everything abruptly passed, as if there was no illness. Well, it's almost over. The dreams remain. Each time they changed, each time stronger and stronger. If at first I was lying down, then after that very week I was already sitting up. Pictures flashed through my mind that I just couldn't realize. However, there were also familiar images. Images of what I saw on Earth, I feel like, tested. They asked about something and I answered, being in the same disgusting state, without control over myself. Bruises and scars stopped appearing, but headache and eye problems took their place. Sometimes the picture just blurred, or it was as if new colors were added to it. Colors that I couldn't name, because I didn't even know how to describe them. And this, genuine and ons, was even worse than bruises. Before that, I could blame everything on my own carelessness and training, albeit with some difficulty, but now I began to seriously suspect whether I was going crazy. I didn't even think of telling my parents or some school psychologist at that time. They won't believe it best, but they can cling on and send them to pass all sorts of tests. I was a fool then, what can I do? However, this story ended quickly enough. The events were repeated almost as at the very beginning. I got lost in thought and turned towards the park. Yes, yes, the one who swore to bypass the 10th road. And most stupidly, I went exactly the same way as the last time. When it dawned on me where I had stumbled into, it was too late to turn around. That ill-fated lake was spread out in front of me again. And yes, it started to glow again. Except this time, it was a little different. I too, was pulsing with this strange light, as if something in me was responding to the call of what was in the lake. I, by that time, I had already spat on everything. My body was not listening to me again, as in those dreams. Were they dreams though? I'm not sure about that anymore. All I had to do was freeze and hope that I could survive this evening, at least partially. Never, comrades, have I been so afraid before. Watching the funnel grow and expand of an incomprehensible color in origin, and how, in response to its flickering, my own light begins to pulsate more and more. I was terrified. Primal, animal horror. That's what I felt then. I was so engrossed in my fear that I didn't immediately notice the change. The light pulsing around me seemed to be attracted to a large tornado that now towered over the lake. As if through a siphon, the glow flowed and absorbed into it. About a minute passed, as the glow around me went out, and the tornado began to twist again with incredible force, as it was the first time. However, something has changed again. An incredible weakness came over me, as if I hadn't slept for three days. I staggered and fell to the ground. I don't know how long I was lying on the ground, but when I woke up my body was numb, and there were several missed messages from my mother on the phone. Despite this, I laughed. He laughed joyfully and slightly hysterically listening to the rustle of leaves on the trees around in the splash of water. Such native and understandable sounds and colors. I was incredibly happy. I survived, survived, and finally it's all over. Twenty years have passed since that moment, and I still don't know what to think about it. I can't tell if it was distorted memories and dreams of a child or really something alien. The only thing I know for sure is that after that incident, the vision in both my eyes dropped by about one. This is my only proof of the reality of what happened in that ill-fated month. I am still sure that I was abducted almost every night and carried out some experiments, but alas, I do not have any serious evidence. If you think that this is not proof of the existence of aliens, then you are right. There is much more evidence and on our channel we will reveal all the secrets and evidence of their presence. Subscribe to the channel and send me your stories related to aliens by email. You will find contacts in the About the Channel section. Together, we will force the authorities of all countries to disclose all the information they have. After all, people should know the truth.